Yes, thank you very much. Right, and uh, peace. We are here to make sure you are fit for the duties we're about to ask you to go and do in London. It will probably be the most significant thing in your army career. You're all willing volunteers. Is there any press men and women here today? Good, I knew that was the case. As myself and the team come to you, please be absolutely honest with us. If you're uncomfortable, you're not happy about something, this is your chance to tell me or the team. We will get it rectified. What we want to do is make sure you get to London and no one is going to start getting on your case. Because we've done this before under the Platinum Jubilee and Royal Engineers and the Queen's Gherkin Engineers, you know, we came out top of the class. That's why we put the effort in. And you will then be in the hands of London District. You are representing 10,000 Royal Engineers and Queen Gurkha Engineers. That is the Sapa family, regular reserves and the Queen's Gurkha Engineers. Be absolutely proud of what we're asking you to do. And I'm absolutely confident, having spoken with the Corps Sergeant Major, had the feedback already, that we have got the right men and women here on parade to represent that body, the Sapa family. I wish you the best as you go forward. Queen's funeral attracted an audience of millions who witnessed one of the grandest ceremonial events in living memory. The performance of thousands of servicemen and women was the result of 10 days of intensive training from the moment Her Majesty's death was announced. The Royal Engineers from Gillingham's Brompton Barracks and the Queen's Gurkha Engineers based in Maidstone were among those taking part. Sarah Smith has been to meet them. A procession a mile long the British military and all its finery. But for the individual men and women here, the pressure was on to do their best for their regiment, their country, and of course their queen. Among them, the engineers, more used to the practical tasks of keeping the army going, suddenly given 10 days to get ready for this. The news came in on the Thursday. Uh, we were on parade at 8am on the Friday morning. Uh, sorted into our marching contingents and the street liner contingents for Windsor and London, uh, straight into drill practice. We, when we stood in the parade in the morning and they, they said, who would like to be part of the parade? You know, my hand just shot up. We are non-stop practicing, but it's, it's hard because on the day you want to focus on make sure you're in the right step, you're all in line together, you look as one. But yeah, it was, it, was, it was hard work, but it was worth it in the end. On the day, some marched, some lined the route, but all felt the weight of the occasion. Throughout the march was really, really uh, humbling, as well as emotional as well, because uh, the Queen uh, led Her Majesty's Queen. She was our Colonel-in-Chief. This is uh, a historic moment, I believe, and um, also an opportunity to sort of do our last duty to Her Majesty, a bit of good farewell and thank her for everything she has done for us. My eyes were like full of tears. I was, I was trying to look up in the sky and like, I was trying to remember her, you know. And it was really one of the proudest moments of my life. They will always remain the Queen's Gurkha engineers, but the regiment will need a new Colonel-in-Chief. This, though, was about getting it right for the one they have lost. You have 10 days to make this work and everybody that's got selected to take part in the parade understood the tasks and we spent every minute that we had making sure we were perfect for the event itself. On the day it didn't feel like everyone was sad, it felt everyone was there to celebrate the Queen. This was the biggest moment of my career and one of the biggest moments of my life. It was, it was such an honour and privilege to be there on the day, to be one of the last 20 Royal Engineers to salute the Queen. It's indescribable the feeling in, in words when that happened.